the Christian Church is present in nations all over the continents of the world. There are churches all over the world, including Asia, Europe, America, North America, South America, all of which are connected through the Holy Spirit and the living Word of God. Brethren from all parts of the world participate in one service together in the same body and the same spirit. Through the system that we have of transmission via satellite, all of the members of the Maranatha Christian Church live a moment of communion and fellowship just like the people of Israel lived when they left Egypt and the disciples when Jesus was going to die at the cross of Calvary. People from all parts of the world have been reached by this eternal gospel and the preaching of the soon return of Christ. Brethren, peace of the Lord, we are starting this Sunday school from the Manai in Dominguez Martins in Brazil, and we are transmitting a new edition of the service of Together and Family from this Manai. There are more than 400 children here, children, intermediates, and adolescents, and thousands of people congregated here in this Manai, in this Together in Family class that we are holding. Now we are going to share a few of the events that we have been doing in this, in this seminar over here. United in Family is the first opportunity that we've had as a family to have to be united in fellowship with our family at a Manai. And now we're going to try to go at least once a year because this has been such a great experience for us. This is our second United in Family service that we have been to, Manain, that we have been to, and we have had great experiences here, and we are so happy that the teachings have, have been passed on to our children. This experience has marked our lives, and we have every intention of coming back with our kids. And the experiences have been immense. We have been invited to participate in a new event of disabilities and our sons Caleb and Moses have participated and the work has been really great and for them to be able to participate in these teachings have been very enriching for us. 
and we are so happy with the involvement of the brethren and the fact that they have been showing our kids these teachings and these and how it is to live in com fellowship with a body. We have learned many things at this manai in this seminar and we are so happy that we have had this chance to learn come to united in family. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have a few announcements for the brethren. Internationally, we've had some seminars in a few cities in Africa. There are pastors from the presbytery there, including Gilson. And there have been seminars all over Africa, including in the city Nampula. And they have participated in this Sunday school with us. We are very happy to have them. And we greet them with the peace of the Lord. We have also realized projects of assistance in Peru. We've had baptisms there and seminars in Peru as well, in the city of Lima y Tirulu. We've also had seminars in Peru, Casa, Casa Grande. The brethren there have had the opportunity to live these experiences with us. In Samara, in Russia, we've had seminars there. As well as in Brazil, we've had a seminar for beginners in the city of Ponta Grossa in Paraná. There was a meeting of the, the ladies, the women of church. There's also been a, a meeting of the teachers in Sao Paulo. There was also a vigil for the jovens in Vila Velha. There was also a consecration of a church in Rio. And there was also the anniversary of the church in Nova Angra. Also the anniversary of the church in Sétila Goas in Minas Gerais. In the city of Telemaco Borba, there was a evangelization where the word of the Lord was spread in the city, as well as in Seara meeting. We've also had many baptisms and in the cities of Peru, Chile, and Sao Paulo, there were, the Lord approved there. Um, there was anointings realized in those cities and we're very happy to welcome those brethren. Now we're going to watch a, a quick video of a teacher who watched the event that we had on the 24th. Uh, Maranatha Christian Church celebrates their 50 years of existence and I'm here to celebrate with the brethren the, the special event and the special moment of the, the gathering that we had in Feasts and Trumpets. And we noticed especially that in this event, we, it was very serene and it was very clear the message and we had and there was so many participants in this in this event and we were very surprised and pleased with this we we're excited to see that the work is being realized and that the word has reached so many different people blessed be the name of the lord and there was a brief testimony for of some brethren that went to the Manai for the first time, and they also had a brief word to say. They said, brethren, peace of the Lord. 
We are with the brethren here, Shayla and Camille. They are here for the first time in the Manai. And we had a special seminar here. And what what do you brother what did you think of the seminar? What did you think of this day here in the presence of the Lord? What was your experience? <coughs> I wanted to say that first of all I wanted to thank all the brethren who received us here. It's been a blessing and for the invitation that we received. Thank you for the the in the genuine nature that you received us. There's no way that someone can come here and leave empty-handed. The teachings are so rich and so powerful that you always leave with something in your heart. And we are and we are so surprised and happy that we came. And we're very happy to be here and that we came at all. The happiness to be here is very great. Thank you so much. We'd like to greet the brethren with the peace of the Lord. We are now going to give continuing to our Sunday school, continuation to our Sunday school. The last Sunday school, we stopped at a certain point, and now we're going to give continuation to that. And we know that the Lord has a lot more to, to offer to us and to teach us. So now we're going to have Jidochi giving us a brief introductory message. Before we got here, before we turned on the satellite, we were talking. And we were talking to the brethren here that are in the seminar, United in Family. And we were talking about the importance of the satellite. All right, it, the children, intermediates, and the adolescents now can be released to go to their to their classes. All right, so now we're going to wait for them to leave. That's right. So coming back to the topic at hand, we were showing to the br brethren here a little bit that is necessary that we understand the doctrine is the most important. You can't make, you can't have an event like an event that we we have here if you don't have a true government, a body, a doctrine. And so the Lord has given us a big blessing to have given us this doctrine and to give us a message that we can announce to the world which is the message of preparedness and vigilance of the time we are living because we are living a prophetic time which is what Jesus has prophesied for us which is what Jesus has been showing us the signs regarding the return of the Lord has been clear for the church and for Israel and for the world. This has been this has been very clear. This has been made clear for the church. Now we're going to talk about the question of the preparing of the satellite. When we give information and announcements, we are giving announcements that have been giving sequence of prophetic and historic and all the announcements are prophetic. When we consult the Bible and when we we open the Bible and we want the Lord to speak to us, we know that this is the word of the Lord speaking to us. So we have to 
take the word and its prophecy, not the actual history and the story. The prophetic, it has a sequence ever from Genesis to Revelation. The prophecy does not stop. So when you pay too much attention to the story, you have to be able to separate the story with the prophecy and the prophetic. Do you have to know the story? Yes, it's important to know the story, but what is most important and most enriching for our lives is that story in context and context to a bigger project which is the project that comes from eternity when we talk about the the lamb the lamb from genesis when we see the lamb mentioned all throughout the bible when it's sacrificed and even with jesus the lamb who died and resurrected this is the, the same figure that is used throughout the whole story or in other words the same project and this is what is important to us if we take the Bible to just preach the stories then it's not going to give us any substance it's not, in, it's not enriching for our souls we have to preach the prophecy and what is beneath the words and beneath the story the revelation if you get here and you have you get an information from one pastor and something else from another pastor you have to remember what they preach that is the revelation that is what's most important the pastor the, the work of the Lord of the Holy Spirit does not permit us to just understand this, this story we have to be conscious of the moment that we are living and that how important the revelation is to our lives and for our hearts just so we can have an idea of the historical moment we are living what it's in reference of it's that the Lord is coming to get his church if you are not if you are not ready why are you not ready because you didn't know all right so if you didn't know you aren't you aren't ready because instead of obeying I'm disobeying the orientation is this but you do something else so you're disprepared instead of being in the body the church of Christ you are an individual only going by your own rules if you have a problem tomorrow and you know you have a problem you have to examine this problem and you have to fix it you have to have resources what are the resources that you use besides the preparing that you have to have you have to prepare you have to be prepared to solve these we were, we were talking last Sunday to a brethren from Canada and he he wanted to go to Australia and when he went to consult to the Lord through the word the Lord said no that's not the place that you ought to go and he said you're going to look for us a uh, brother and he's going to ask you where you have to go so he went to go find this brother and this brother and said that the place he has to go is Canada and in Canada they speak French and in his specialty he had to speak French so he went to go to this 
interview, but before he went, he went to find a pastor. And the revelation was that he was not prepared, but you will you'll focus on the details. So he went to go get interviewed, and the lady was very intelligent, and he was all, and during this interview he was getting all confused, and he wasn't prepared. It was evident that he didn't have the condition to go along with this. But and then one thing that he asked, that the lady asked, and the the man answered that I'm I'm from I'm from the Maranatha Christian Church. I believe in God, and right away she gave him the the papers and and she deemed him prepared in that moment. So even though he didn't pre prepared, he still entered the program, and the Lord opened the doors for him. And he's even in university today. But brethren, the life is like this. But we can't now just want to not study and not put in the work. We still have to put in the work. The, the brethren, he followed the orientation of the Lord. He followed the word of the Lord in that experience, and the Lord blessed him. We had here a brethren who was a driver, and the bus that he was driving, the brakes weren't working. And the people he was he was bringing in the and the bus. <laughs> the brakes weren't working in the truck, but out of nowhere there was a big group of people in the truck, and the Lord blessed them very much, and He He made it so that they nothing happened. Can you imagine if a truck doesn't have brakes, but everything turned out just fine? That's that's the Lord. That's the Lord delivering us and protecting our lives. There was a lady once who at dawn was walking around the, the streets. And there was a man. There was a man who was following her, and, and she said, I can't run, or else he'd start running after me. So, and then she started to plead, and she started to plead, and out of nowhere, he. He started to run after her, but at the same moment, there was a a police officer there who was also from her church, and he took her. He took the man in that moment, and so the lady, she was just fine. And this is what the Lord does. He he puts himself at our disposal. He he makes himself known to us. And the fellowship is the best thing that the servant has. The whole world is outside, and there are so many people outside, people you live with, your families, your friends, everything's out in the world, but the fellowship is inside the church. Fellowship is so important because today someone was looking for me, and they told me that the Lord gave a revelation and the Lord showed this and this and this. And when you receive the revelation, this is only made possible by fellowship. And it's something extraordinary.
the, the word from the brethren has to be revealed by the Lord. It has to be the revealed word. It can't just be the story. There was one Sunday school that the Lord that the Lord operated in such a way that there was an explosion of grace and so much grace poured on our lives. Do you remember when we were going over in Nehemiah? When we were talking about Nehemiah, you guys, you guys didn't forget last week, did you? We received a different type of blessing. We received a big blessing. If you guys didn't receive a blessing, then please give us the name of your pastor so we can talk to them. We are living in the moment of grace. If you tell the Lord, listen, I'm going to dedicate this time five to nine o'clock to you, Lord. He knows that you can do it. But if you don't do it, if you know you can do it and you don't, then that's disobedience. The man only returns the presence of the Lord through obedience. And the obedience is with the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit. So, my brethren, the Lord has given us many resources of His grace that we can use. The early, early, early dawns, fasting, consulting the Word, prayers. When you speak of this prophetic moment, we, we have to remember that the Lord has been giving us the resources for this moment that we are living. He doesn't expect us to live in this moment without using His resources, without prayer and fasting and consulting early dawns. And this is all given to us so that we can have deliverances and that the Lord can continue to deliver us and protect us. Stay vigilant and to pray. It's one of the most important things that we can do. Because the more you pray, the more you have communion and fellowship with the Lord. The more we pray, the more we are vigilant, the more the experiences, the, the more understanding that will come. In Lucas 20, 14, where is the, the Trinity in this verse? The pastor is going to have to know this. There's going to be a story, but we have to pay attention to the revelation. Let's see who's going to get this right. <coughs> the questions that he gives are, are easy. Whoever, whoever finds this can raise their hand. No one? Let's go. Has anyone, has anyone found it yet? The pastor can try to look for it too. Last week we spoke of the Trinity, the, the Holy Trinity. The man... There was a certain man. He invited people to the wedding of his son. So which one is each part of the Trinity? So when we look into the word, we have to know these different parts. In this parable, for example, you have to know what refers to the church, what refers to Israel. So which... So there's one um, verse that refers to the church, one verse that refers to Israel. These are all revelations. Vamos 
céu e os outros que não vão para o céu. Vou falar outra palavra que eu não posso, porque é a palavra que eu temia. Mas veja aqui. But pay attention here. Por outro lado, I was like, no, so On their side, they say the movements out in the world are all are all wrong. Is this right? Yes or no? What are we referring to? Let's go. Everyone was invited to this wedding, right? So, all. The, the blessing is for all. Whoever believes and whoever doesn't believe. The blessing is for all. But the invitation has its own moment. In the verse, it says what? It says what about this moment? It says, those who were invited are different. What, do, what characterizes the second invitation? Does anyone know? One word, one word that's, that makes it very clear. I'm going to put it here. The time. It's another, it's another time. It's the time that we are living. So the invitation that the father of the groom gives is for this time that we are living. And why is this different from the first invitation? Because the first invitation, everyone is invited. But when the time of the wedding was near, what is the time that we're speaking of? It's the time of the, of the feast, the time of the rapture, the time of the return of the Lord, when the church is going to go to heaven. That's the time that we are referring to. We're going to announce to the world this time. And those people who stayed home, who gave excuses, I ask now, are the excuses, are they right? Are they correct? Let's, let's answer this question, yes or no? Those who said yes, raise your hand. Were the excuses right? And the majority of people understand yes, but they just didn't raise their hand. But pay attention here, listen here. What are they trying to say in relation to this invitation? They were invited, but they don't want the feast. They don't want to participate in the feast. They aren't interested. It's not for the religious. It's not for the Catholic Church. It's not for the Protestant Church. It's for those who know that Jesus comes and this is the time. Because they are baptized with the Holy Spirit. They have the, the gifts. They know the revealed word, the prophetic service. They have the pleading for the blood of Jesus. There's no reason to have excuses. So the time is this. It's one moment, which the brother even, even preached for us is in the blink of an eye. In the blink of an eye, we're gonna, we're all gonna be gone from here. Open and close your eyes. That's how fast the church is gonna go. So I ask in this moment, the question that I return to ask, the answers, were they right in the answers? What is, was the first answer? What was the first excuse? The first excuse was, I bought, I bought land. So they started to make excuses, all of them. And they're a group of people who don't want, don't want to participate in the feast. They don't want the invitation. The invitation 
is to be part of the, the body. It's to be part of the rapture of when Jesus comes so that we can go with Jesus when, when he returns. We have today a, a challenge and we have to know we have to know what it's going to be. To show scientifically what this moment is, when they asked this question if they could go to the wedding, were the excuses valid? Should they have made excuses, yes or no? So why did they give excuses? What was the reason for this? On the 24th, there were some people who were who were very interested and there were you can see from my hair that I'm descendant of Indians of native natives so you don't have to go all the way to the Amazon you can go you can go to your neighbors in your own house to the people you find in the streets to evangelize and to preach We're talk Brazilians are very are very beautiful. We're all from descendants of natives. But we we have we have a commitment and in this commitment it does not have space for you to keep giving excuses. There's no time for excuses. Some people were giving excuses. I just bought a piece of land, just bought a piece of ground. And you're not going to be a part of the rapture. You're not going to go with Jesus if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't have the fellowship, if you don't have the... If you're not attentive, if you're not vigilant. So Jesus comes. I'm only thinking of Jesus, I'm only thinking of God. And you, but you can't just do that. You have to be vigilant. You have to serve the Lord, but you also have to be serving. You have to be doing the work. You have to do everything that you can. You have to. You have to fight for a cause that's. You have to fight for this cause. The eternity is is a cause that's yours. It's something that you want. So you have to fight for it. The world doesn't think like this. They think in the complete opposite way. They o only pay attention to the things that aren't good. We're not talking of just Brazil or just one country. We're talking about the whole world. This is the situation of the world. The church, now we have our reasons to be attentive and to and to receive this calling. Excuses. The world is ready to give excuses and is ready to give all the excuses that they can. The people who don't know that the Lord is coming, they're going to give excuses. They don't even care. Other people in the world can't explain to them what is happening. The ones who are going to explain to them what's happening are the ones who believe, the believers, the servants, 
the ones who go to church, the ones who live the gospel, they're the ones who have to be ready to explain and to preach and evangelize. So I want to explain the rapture is going to it's going to be it's going to be in a blink of an eye you're going to you're going to blink you're going to see someone and they're not going to be there anymore that's how quick it's going to be and, and the people of the world don't understand this so we have to be here ready to explain it to them the communion we, we pray for the bread and for the wine and the brethren thinks that he's the one that's blessing the, the bread but that's just not true it's God who has God who has this function they want to show off people live like this and we are fighting against this it's, this is the, the piece of land that we're talking about it's the it's the field people are not willing to let go of these things of the world in Japan when there's a tsunami they quickly build it back up again if something catches on fire they're quickly able to reconstruct everything again that's how the world's going to be the, the man thinks they have excuses to stay on earth and to not go to heaven and to not serve the Lord but there is one there is one important factor it's the suffering suffering is going to be for those who know who knew about God but chose not to chose not to listen <laughs> the question is this the church is ready for the rapture yes or no yes are you are you ready for the rapture yes or no yes okay if if you guys go then I'll go too There was a, a brother in, in United States of America, and the pastor decided to make a a meeting, and the deacon said, "Tell tell the people that there's going to be a, a special message." So they invited all these people, and so the church was was packed, and they started talking about the return of God, the return of Jesus, and the rapture. And then one starts to raise their hand. And then someone asked, what if Jesus comes right now? And the, de and the deacon, he had a trumpet upstairs. And he, and he played this trumpet. And everyone started running around, going crazy. They were all surprised. They weren't expecting this. And everyone started running around, and they ran, and only this deacon remained. <laughs> and he said that the only reason he stayed was because someone had taken his glasses. So, so 
pode ser de 10 e ninguém vai morrer mais. É isso que é o certo. Mas as pessoas The people, we have reached a time where we have to be definite. Are you, you are ready? The pastor is only going to talk about the judgment that exists. And the question that I was going to ask, I want the pastor to ask in this right now. So the judgment, what will be the judgment for those who rejected the invitation? The word of the Lord says, the verse 24, let's go, Luke 14, 24, Luke 14, 24, let's read it all together, this verse here. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. This is the judgment. It's a terrible judgment that they will not participate in the supper. They were, they were rejected. They won't even try the supper. And we can we can end here right some suggestions for the message will be in revelations revelation chapter 19 verse 9 let's read let's read revelation 19 9 it says then he said to me write blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the lamb and he said to me these are the true sayings of god Blessed are those who are invited, are those who are called. This is all of us. We are all invited. Now, what is rest, what is most important is for us to attend to this invitation and for us to participate. So now we are going to, we are going to end our Sunday school. We're going to sing a, a song while the children return back to their seats so we can end our service.
Let's all be standing in this moment. Evandro is going to pray for the children and Trinidad and adolescents. Lord Jesus, we plead for the blood of Jesus when in this moment we put before you, Lord, the children. We ask that you take them into your hands, Lord. Bless their their maturing and their growing in your presence, their growth in your presence, and deliver them from the influences of their world of this world. Bless your teachers. Give them your blessing and your grace. And in this way, we plead, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, we we plead for the service, and we pray for the service of tonight so that it could be a good good service in your presence lord and in your name we pray lord for the love of god for the sweet and eternal consolations from the holy spirit now and forever amen tonight the children are going to sing he comes in the middle of the night to all the peace of the lord Thank you.